Stick around for the end of this video. We're gonna see a huge property with a garden in Arpino, Italy. This is part two of my experience visiting Arpino in October of 2020. So I just met Kylie Cosa. We're here in the piazza. Say hi, Kylie. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> We're going to ask her to introduce herself, basically, so everybody can know who she is, what she's doing in this town way off the coast. Beautiful village, by the way. Just take a look at the, this piazza. There's a number of people that are just exploring around during the day. It's still right before lunchtime. But Kylie, what brought you here? Well, I'm from Sydney, Australia, yeah. first up. My husband was born in this town and his family have been here for hundreds of years. And so the first time we came, it was on our honeymoon and I fell in love with the place. We, then we had our own daughters. We started coming every year for holidays. Eventually it just became more and more difficult to leave. We kept extending our holidays and we kept thinking of ways that we could get over here more <laughs> often. And then I would cry when it was time to go home, the girls would cry and it just seemed like, you know, why don't we give this a shot and just like change it up and just like follow our dream. It was pretty scary doing it. It's never easy actually like moving your whole life and going to live in another country <laughs> full time. Especially I couldn't speak any Italian and nor could the girls. Now of course I can speak Italian a lot better, still not very very well. But Italians have to be the most generous people in the world for, you know, <laughs> don't you think? I don't know if you found the same thing, but no, my Italian really is not great. Oh yeah. They but actually never they complain, mind. not a single they never time. Complain. They're like, well, it's close enough. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. They say to me, piano, piano, and I say, yeah, but I've been here 10 years. And they're like, well, things take time. <laughs> piano, 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 piano. That's this beautiful. More, let's see. Yeah, they yeah. like that. Okay. Even if it took your whole life, they'd be, they'd be cool with that. What are you doing here? Uh, you're okay. working? Yeah. Um, I know the answer to this, by the way. Okay, but. so we first <laughs> moved here and I really didn't want to do anything. I thought that I'd become an olive farmer, a place in the country with 700 olive trees. And I thought, wow, you know, I have an olive grove. I really didn't like picking olives. <laughs> and, and after a couple of years of being a farmer, I kind of got bored. Uh, okay. And also I had some really But did you actually strange, pick them? You actually I did the picked, thing? Yeah. I mean, one by one, I've never tried that. And I don't think I could <laughs> last. <laughs> I, you know, I can barely cope with the machine. It's the romantic part of being an olive farmer, going to the mill with your olives when they're picked mm -hmm. and actually watching that oil come out. I realized that, you know, there weren't very many foreigners here in town. And I realized that, it, you know, if I loved this place, I thought maybe other people will too. Mm -hmm. And so now I am involved in the real estate industry here and also um, the restoring of houses. Now's the time where we get to follow Kylie through this property tour I mentioned. You know, I've been meeting a lot more expats in Italy and a lot of that has to do with a Facebook group that I joined recently called Expats in Italy. If anyone's interested, I'm in there. I actually like how people have genuine questions and people are genuinely interested in helping out. It's run by a group called anyexpat.com and you'll find links in the description to get to the, either the group or the website directly for services you might need. Probably about three minutes drive from Arpino. And this little cottage, I really like it. It's the outside's rendered right now and you could totally fix that up or you could chip that off and take it back to stone. This mm. is an old stone house. So cool. It would look so cool if it I was like back to stone. I like this portale. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Come in. Okay, so the house has got, you know, we've, the guys been doing it up and structurally it's in perfect condition. There are finishing touches to be made though. For example, these wooden beam ceilings, they've all been sanded back to some extent, but you know, they should probably be, you know, just finished off a little better or painted perhaps to sort of lighten the house up. I personally really like the rustic look, but you know, there are so many options you could implement here in order to make it just a perfect experience for your family. The house has got brand new electrics and I mean, I keep seeing this system where it's, well, actually this one's different, but... Yeah, it should be fabric, I think. Yeah, you got be like a, lot a better. woven Yeah, the woven fabric. ones. That's easily changed out. There's definitely room for some personalization, shall we say, yeah. <laughs> which I think is good. The 
so this is the first part of the garden and that comes straight off this living room. If you could make some kind of um, patio on the back side here. Yeah. Uh, like the normal thing, there's already the stairway there. We could just make it flat, uh, make a, a walkout terrace. Yes. And then sh drop the stairway. I love that idea. I love that idea. I think it would be absolutely fantastic. It looks like they they put the the hot water heating system yeah. uh, exit here, assuming that you're really keeping that at ground level. Yeah. So you'd have to adjust that. Adjust that, but it's not a big deal to do. Very nice. In these old houses, the kitchens weren't built-in kitchens that we're used to. People had kitchens that, you know, had kind of things like this, pieces of furniture that kind of sat around and they just, you know, used the kitchen like that. There's plenty of space in here to put a fit, fitted kitchen if that's yeah, what you place, like. This yeah. kitchen is huge. Yeah. I think if that balcony just came from here and then there was a staircase into the garden, that would be absolutely then brilliant. Then you could put whatever underneath that. or yeah. storage area yeah. underneath. Yeah. Well, I think the caldera could go under there, actually. Hidden. I mean, and that way it'd be hidden. Yeah. That'd be perfect. And that's a guest um, bathroom. Right next to this uh, view. Yeah. Guest bathroom on the staircase, which is really handy for anyone that's on the ground floor. It is a toilet and a sink. For a guest bathroom. Absolutely. So then we've got one bedroom here, which I guess is designed to be the master bedroom. Very bright. I like Very it. bright. Which and direction is east? Ah, the sea is over those mountains. So the sea is off that direction. Yeah. So you have like a south facing window here. Can you stand in that corner so they get an idea yeah. of how, how large this room is? Yeah, seriously. Oh, that's so it's big. These ceilings. How They've, tall are they? Usually about three and a half meters in these old houses. They've just been redone, so they're all new. They also did the cordula around the house, you know, the rim that braces oh. a house. Now, I have to admit that a three bedroom, two bathroom location like this, it has so much space regarding living spaces and garden spaces, is not all that common on my channel, at least up until this point. Let's close this off. Yes, I would close that. If we close it on one side, the other side becomes a wardrobe. I'm really curious how much it's going to cost. And if you have any guesses, go ahead and write them in the comments. I'll begin to tell you what the cost of this property could be. Oh, no, it was upstairs, not downstairs, that I saw the Yeah, boat. yeah. The house is braced very well. What it is, it's earthquake bracing. And mm -hmm. they're, we call them chains. They're called chains. And it's weird because... They don't resemble chains at all, actually. Yeah. No. Um, but they brace a house. Mm -hmm. But this, this house has got those, but then it's also got another feature under the roof um, designed, you know, by the structural engineer. Is it hidden? And it holds it all together. It's called a cordulo. Yeah. Uh, it's hidden. It's one of the rules, anyway, when you're going to do a new roof, that you should have this cordulo, and it just strengthens the house and holds it together. We're not in a particularly, you know, dangerous area, but, you know, it's always just good to have stuff like that. Italy, you know, it's a fact of life in Italy. You've got a friend waiting for you to buy this home. <laughs> <laughs> the one fault that I find with this house is that the bathroom is really quite small for a three bedroom house of this size. I mean, take a look at it and see what you think. Yeah, it's, it's more it's like compact. a half bath almost. Yeah, exactly. So my idea was more that this house, because we're not in the historic center right here, we're only a few minutes from it, but because we're not there, we're not um, constrained by the rules and regulations that anyone in town is. So we can absolutely extend the house here very easily. And it wouldn't cost very much at all to take this balcony out to the point. Take a look at that. We're next door. Next door's under construction, guys, but it's, um, I think... 
So basically going to the edge done. of the building. Go to the edge of that building and give yourself a, a fabulous bathroom. You can match it up the whole way over. Yeah. And then that would become an overhang and a really shady space for the balcony that, you know, we were discussing that you could possibly build yeah, downstairs. Yeah, an idea what's below. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. would be awesome. Easy enough to do. And I think the house like a house like this really deserves a big <laughs> bathroom. You could leave this hallway so you've got the access to this bedroom, but the bathroom could actually start from there mm -hmm. and just see, be on I that see. side. I wouldn't mind having a balcony to sit on right here. You kids, get off my lawn. This house is really big. Uh, if you can see from that corner over here, she's up here shutting the doors and uh, all the way over and there's a, there's a storage space down below. But that whole space is uh, for sale right now. This garden back here as well, you can see it extends pretty far down there. Uh, I could walk down, it looks a little bit, uh, like the lawn needs cut a bit, but I can see the back after the one, two, three, fourth tree. And it also shoots over like an L shape, so following this fence line. There are water accesses for the garden. It needs to be loved, right? The property is just huge. Our Pino has a lot of history to it. It could be yours, I guess, if, you, if that's what you're looking for. So I was talking to Kylie about the price of this, and this is the first house I've seen. I really don't know the property uh, levels, uh, basically the range of prop prices here yet. This one is still needing work. It's had work done, but it still has some leftover to do. Uh, is for sale for 150,000 euros. And so I do want to say this though, everything's negotiable almost all the time. There'll be maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll run into someone and say, no, I'm fixed on that price. But they also haven't sold it. They also... <laughs> do your calculations and do what you're comfortable with. Make the offer with a comfortable price for your budget. Um, if they don't accept, move on. There's plenty of opportunity. All right. Uh, also, before you make that offer, make sure you get it checked out by some surveyor or just someone you trust, especially if you can't come over and you're doing some type of remote purchasing. You definitely want to get a, an extra perspective on the property that knows a, a thing or two about structural integrity. They said they've already checked out the structural integrity as well as you can see they've done some work to make it earthquake proof. There's some areas that need to be closed in and hidden as far as the drain goes. But I really do think this building a, a, a patio out here and above it and extending the balcony up to this point would be a beautiful addition to this home. Kylie has a lot of experience helping foreigners um, purchase property and as we heard before she uh, Notice there weren't as many here. She loved to hear. Why not share it with everyone? So if you do like this area and you want to reach out to Kylie, check the link in the description. Let me know which property you bought. Perhaps you bought this one. Definitely write it in the comments what you think about this area or what you think about this property. We do always do kind of a casual property tour. Nothing too extravagant because it's, it's just like a first look. You'll definitely have lots of questions. Kylie is the right person to ask for this property. Thanks everyone. See you next video.